So this is my studio. I start pieces standing up and I throw around ideas, loop things, um, try out different effects processing. When I have an overall sense of the shape of the piece, I will transition to my desktop computer. And here I can sit and carve um, and do all the tedious iterations that you have to do when you're producing a track. Essentially, I work sitting and I play standing. I'm going to start by showing you how I process sounds initially. These are some field recordings from around my house and around downtown Los Angeles. And usually what I do is I will start with a little sound and loop it and then start adding effects rather quickly to get um, some exciting process sound. So this sound is my oven, which makes sort of a vocal sound, but it's certainly grounded in earth reality. In this version, I have looped it in and doubled the length of time it takes for each loop in live. So this to me feels much more like an alien screaming. It's almost like an agonized sound, which I really like. And I added some effects to it. Here it's sort of getting chopped up and the way it sounds to me is like someone is trying to speak but they're being interrupted. Um, so often I'll take sounds that are not human, not at all human, and I try to perhaps make them speak, um, give them a voice. One other thing I have is a little tap sound that when I first heard it was not very interesting, but that's sometimes the fun challenge is to take something that is not interesting, it doesn't stand out, and try to like push it to see if it can be exciting. And then I've played with splitting the frequencies. So I have a, this is just like a little rack in live and I've split the high frequencies, the mids and the lows. And on the highs I've put this delay and so it's only affecting those highs and then the mids I've put this effect that's moving around and it's there's a bunch of different effects in here um, the lows I usually don't do much too I'll often just actually cut them a little bit because effects in the lows at least for me don't you can't hear them very well um, and then because I like this, but it's a little extreme to have all your highs going through a delay, uh, I just have a dry, you know, a duplicated, well, uh, another channel and it's dry and this one is um, frequency splitter. So it's like the wet channel and I'll mix those together. Uh, next I have a scanner sound very tonal, there's a musicality there. And I wanted to see how much I could change the sound. How could I make this as little like the original as possible? And so I tried to push it back into this washy, big kind of ocean sound by adding delay, again, pitching it down like two octaves some distortion, another delay, some EQ bringing up the highs, cutting some of the lows. And I will play with the wetness in terms of how far away I want it to feel on these delays. The goal is sort of to create something that sings that uh, naturally is maybe just an impact sound or a really dull sound. Um, I feel this urge to try to make mundane objects beautiful or scary or threatening, like to give them as much power as possible. I don't know why this is something I feel compelled to do, but it's very much a compulsive <laughs> instinct I have. Lemurs and lots of animals will have animal calls that sound a bit like a saxophone or um, some kind of brass. So here's a lemur. And then the same sort of notes are being played by these samples. So they combine in my mind to something greater than 
just lemur samples or saxophones, it becomes this exotic orchestra that could never really exist in the real world. This is a pitch down lemur. <laughs> Sometimes when I work with traditional instrumentation, because I'm not a trained pianist or guitarist, um, I feel like I have to add something interesting and different um, that would reflect my own perspective. So I was making this song with a basic piano line and I thought, well, what if I record each note separately, and then I process them separately. So I can create something that sounds bigger and stranger than a piano, but is basically a piano. So it sounds like this all together. And if I just solo tracks, you'll see this note. There's a little bit of auto pan. Um, I have an EQ there. This note is similar, but a different kind of panning. This third note, I have some bit reduction and a, like a filter that's doing random sweeps. And down here I have some distortion and another filter doing something else. Later in the track, I will bring in a piano that's normal. It's recorded um, just on one track and I'm not separating any notes. But together when you combine them, it's interesting because you have a stable piano and then sort of a wild, wild west piano. Um, and just really to have the sense of the piano kind of like a ghost moving around the room, I added these little details on specific notes. And later I have another effect. It's like a reversed, distorted panning note. And in context, it sounds like 